Hi, Dave Williams here. And in this video, I want to explain bipolar junction transistor voltage divider bias circuits. The circuit that you see here is a voltage divider bias circuit. And as you probably guessed, the reason that it's called a voltage divider bias is because this voltage divider network right here is used for biasing the transistor into the region that you want it to be in. These voltage divider bias circuits are probably the most common way to bias the bipolar junction transistors because they are quite independent of the value of beta. The, the biasing position is independent of the value of beta. And even for a given transistor, the beta value can change. Beta is very sensitive to temperature. So if you've designed a circuit to have a particular operating point and the temperature changes, beta is going to change, which could affect your biasing point. But the voltage divider bias circuit protects somewhat against that. So let's start the analysis of this transistor circuit. We'll start looking at the main way or the complete way of doing the analysis of the circuit to, to determine the operating point, finding out the collector current, the emitter current, the base current, the collector emitter voltage, all of these things that we want to know about the circuit. There's a main way to do it and then a shortcut way to do it. We're going to do it both ways and we'll look at the conditions that are required in order to do the shortcut method. So I'm going to start by splitting this circuit into two without changing the, the actual circuit. We have a VCC, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this part of the circuit on the base and then draw the circuit just for that part. So this voltage divider network is connected to the base, to the base of the transistor. And I've drawn two voltage sources, but really these are just both the same ones. I've just split it onto the two sides. It's both VCC. And over here on the voltage divider input, I've got the split between R1 and R2. And then on the output side, I've got the emitter and collector and the emitter and collector resistances. So now I'm going to take this part of the circuit and turn it into its Thevenin equivalent. So what is the voltage that's going to be applied here and through what kind of resistance? So the Thevenin equivalent voltage is simply going to be the voltage divider between those two resistors. So that'll be VCC times R2 over R1 plus R2. And the Thevenin equivalent resistance seen at that point is going to be simply the parallel combination of R1 and R2. So what this does is it converts this circuit into one that looks like this. Now hopefully this circuit looks somewhat familiar to you. It is uh, the base bias circuit that I've talked about before. Now what we want to do is we, we want to figure out the operating conditions, operating point for this circuit. So we need to figure out the base current, the collector current, the emitter current, the base, uh, the collector emitter voltage. So the first thing we're going to do is, is write the loop equation for this input loop here, the, the Kirchhoff's voltage law loop equation. So what we get is the voltage from this Thevenin voltage equivalent minus the voltage drop across the Thevenin equivalent resistance minus the base emitter drop minus the drop across the emitter resistor. So there's the drop across RTH minus the base emitter voltage, minus the drop across the resistor that's connected to the emitter to ground. So once we get around that loop, we're back to the ground point, so that sum of voltages should equal zero. Now remember, the emitter current is going to be equal to beta plus one times IB, so we can substitute that number in. So here we're substituting beta plus one times IB for the emitter current. And that's all equal to zero. Finally, with a bit of algebra, well, not finally for the whole circuit, but finally for figuring out what the base current is, with a little bit of algebra, we can solve for IB. And so we get the voltage from the Thevenin, Thevenin equivalent source minus the drop across the base emitter junction 
divided by RTH plus beta plus 1 times RE. And now that we solved for the base current, we can also very easily solve for the collector current as well as for the emitter current. So we've got all the currents that we need to know. We also need to know what the collector emitter voltage is right here. So in order to do that, we're going to write a Kirchhoff's voltage loop equation for this part of the circuit. So we get the voltage from VCC minus the drop across the collector resistor minus the collector emitter voltage minus the drop across the emitter resistor brings us to ground. Now it's a simple matter of solving for VCE and we get VCE is equal to VCC minus IC times RC plus RE. Now there's a that's not quite exactly right because IE is a little bit bigger than IC but they're so close assuming that beta is pretty big that I can just approximate IE as, as IC. So I, all I would need to do at this point is plug numbers in for my voltage source, my collector current, and my resistor values and I can solve for VCE and then the combination of the VCE and the IC gives me the operating point for this transistor circuit. Well actually not this transistor circuit it's this transistor circuit. All right, here is an example circuit. So let's do the analysis to find the operating point of this circuit. So what I want to do is find out what is the Thevenin equivalent source that's being applied here at the base. So I get the voltage divider between the R1 and the R2. And that gives me a voltage of 3.33 volts through a resistor that's based on the parallel combination of R1 and R2. So that's the 10K in parallel to the 50K resistor. And that gives me 8.33 kilo ohms. So this part of the circuit could be can be replaced with the equivalent of this. That's 8.33 kilo ohms and this is 3.33 volts. So that is plugged in right here to the base. I've gone through a derivation of the base current and that was based on the voltage loop from the Thevenin voltage, Thevenin resistance, and then resistance here in the emitter. And I calculated that the base current is equal to that Thevenin voltage minus the base emitter junction divided by the resistance that it sees. So I can plug the numbers in and I get 3.33 volts minus the 0.7 volt drop across the base emitter junction divided by 8330 plus beta plus 1, that gives me 201 times the resistance at the emitter, that's a thousand ohms, and I end up with a base current of 12.56 microamps. Once I've figured out the base current, very easy to figure out the collector current. That's going to be beta times that base current, which gives me 2.513 milliamps. And the emitter current is going to be about the same as 201 times that, so it's, you know, 2.52 milliamps or so. The collector emitter voltage, easy to calculate as well. figure it out from the loop here at the output, VCC minus IC times the collector resistance plus the emitter resistance, plug the, plug the numbers in, and I end up with 9.948 volts. So the combination of these two values gives me the operating point for this transistor circuit. So here's the combination, here's my Q point combination of the IC and VCE values. Now remember I said that one of the reasons that the universal bias or the voltage divider bias circuit is, is so popular is because it's fairly independent of the value of beta. So I, I'm just going to tell you what 
the operating point is going to change to under a couple of different beta values, but I leave you as leave it to you as an exercise to do the calculations yourself. If the beta is cut in half all the way to 100, the collector current doesn't change that much. It's going to change, but it doesn't change a lot. It changes to 2.405 milliamps, and the collector emitter voltage changes to 10.38 volts. So a bit of a change, but it doesn't really shift it too much on those transistor characteristic curves. If I change the beta to a much bigger number of 300, and I go through the calculations again, I end up with a collector current of 2.551 milliamps and a collector emitter voltage of 9.796 volts or 1.796 volts. So even this difference from beta of 100 to beta of 300, the difference of the collector em the collector emitter voltage changes by 0.6 volts and the collector current changes by 40 milliamps or so. So this circuit is fairly independent of the beta value, the operating point. So temperature changes, the operating point doesn't change by much. And the reason that the circuit is fairly beta independent is that if the beta goes up, let's write out the equation for, for the base current again. When beta goes up, the base current is going to go down. But on the other hand, if beta goes up, the collector current is going to go up as well. So you have these two competing effects. If beta goes up, the base current goes down, which causes this note. So the base current here goes down, but beta's gone up. So you have competing effects here on the collector current that cause it to not change as much when beta changes. So there is a shortcut approximation method that skips a few steps when you're doing the analysis or allows you to skip a few steps when you're doing the analysis on a, on a voltage divider bias circuit. If we assume that this base current is so small that it's effectively zero, then we can just ig ignore the base current. And so how, how do you define small enough? Well, small enough is going to occur when the, the resistance that R2 imposes is much smaller than the resistance seen looking into the transistor. And, and we can use an approximation of, of 10 times, 10 times smaller. So as long as R2 is less than or equal to one tenth of the resistance seen looking into the, into the base of the transistor, which is going to be determined by beta and the RE value. So if this number is bigger than this number, then we can assume that the base current is effectively zero, and that's going to simplify our calculations quite a bit. That's going to mean that the voltage at the base is going to be simply dependent on R2 divided by R1 plus R2. So again, just the voltage divider between R1 and R2, and then multiply that by VCC. And that's going to then mean that the voltage at the emitter is equal to whatever that voltage you just calculated at the base is minus the 0.7 volt drop across the base emitter junction. Then, very easy to figure out the emitter current. It will simply be that emitter voltage divided by the emitter resistance. And since we've said that the base current is effectively zero in this circuit, IC is going to be the same, same value as IE. Then the loop on the collector emitter, in the collector emitter path here is going to be the same as what we did in the previous example. We've got VCC minus the voltage drop across RC, minus the collector emitter voltage, minus the voltage drop across RE, to bring us back to ground. And VCE then is equal to VCC minus IC times the sum of the two resistors, collector re resistor and emitter resistor. So it, it, this, this method, as long as this statement is true for your circuit, simplifies your calculation for the, the operating point of collector current and collector emitter voltage. So let's use this method on the example that we just finished doing. 
So first of all, before I can use the, the shortcut method, I have to check, is R2 less than or equal to 1 tenth of beta RE? So we have 10K for R2. And is that less than or equal to 1 tenth beta RE? Well, 1 tenth of 200 times 1,000 is 20,000. So yes, that is true. So I can use the shortcut method. So that means that my base voltage will be 10 over 10 plus 50 times the 20 volts. So the base voltage is 3.33 volts. The voltage at the emitter will be that 3.33 volts minus the base emitter voltage drop to give me 2.63 volts. The current, the emitter current will be that 2.63 volts divided by the emitter resistor of 1K, 1000 ohms, to give me 2.63 milliamps. And that is the same as my collector current. So that's one of the one of the pieces of my operating point. And then my collector emitter voltage will be 20 volts minus the drops across these two resistors. So that'll be 2.63 milliamps times 3K plus 1K. And that gives me a value of 9.48 volts. So with this method, I get an operating point of 2.63 milliamps and 9.48 volts. With the previous method where I was doing the exact calculation, I ended up with a Q of 2.52 milliamps and a collector emitter voltage of 9.94 volts. So a little bit different. Uh, it's about a 4% difference between, between the two. So considering that there's probably that much error in your resistor values and that much error in your in your beta, and your beta is going to change anyway, the these 4% error is probably not enough to be significant. And on, anyway, this is the, the DC biasing point that you're trying to, to target, which you just want to target, if, if you're creating an amplifier, you just want to target within the middle of your load line anyway. So I hope that clears up your understanding of voltage divider bias circuits, and I will see you in the next video.